going to get into in this new world that we're all creating together uh, with the way that we are doing AI now and the deep learning for AI is not just about how we learn, but we've got to be careful of, we always said when we were creating computers in my reality, trash in, trash out, right? Right. So whatever you put in and you take out. So we were talking with Janet Lesson and Laurie O'Hara. Was it Lisa? Lisa, wasn't it? Lisa O'Hara. Lisa O'Hara. And I thought that was a good show, but uh, we uh, I'll go back and grab that show uh, and put it on here for uh, last night. Last night, folks, for you to find it. But it was quite interesting, uh, even though we had a little difficulty in the middle for a while with me and Skype. But um, people use unique ways of speaking their reality and how they are looking for the parts maybe of themselves. And each of us are unique in a body, but it's not just what is unique about us, and it's also what is the same. And there's still that, that which is different. There's something unique about us. And I've learned uh, spiritually on Sundays, I like to do spiritual shows, and we do with body, mind, and spirit. Those are the three that you know we've always brought up with whole health. And in these old occult metaphysical bookstores is how do we deal with our minds, our consciousness, and our soul, and are they different like free will? Do we have a destiny, fate, karma, and all these? This could We could go on for hours on each word and make a show, which we may do that, or have a panel for people that want to discuss with Suzanne and I uh, different topics. They may be specialist or PhDs in certain psychology or philosophy. I don't know, Jane. <laughs> Suzanne. But Suzanne and I will do our best to help you guys. We're both doing readings and we're creating a new domain just for our friends and see what we can create for the future with our experiences and our soul expansions. Expansions? That sounds funny. Soul expansions. And consciousness. So, Suzanne, you you talk a lot, and you help a lot of people every day. So you're a really uh, – I've done that for off and on as a psychic reader in person, which is where we – I guess you and I both got started. And then in the 80s, in the 90s, I did bookstore readings because they used to have psychics. And then you worked – I got 16, almost 20 years, didn't you, at Tango or whatever, booking psychics yeah. plus – how long were you there doing that in California? So I, I think I did the same. I think the same thing that you're talking about. You you train. You know, my first deck was the Marseille Tarot deck, um, and you do the training and you do the education, and then you find people that want to do readings. First, it's your your friends and your family members and their friends and family members, and then you. And then slowly but surely somebody offers to start paying you. Um, and so it sort of builds from that. So, and I became active yeah. in a unit. Yeah, that's what I mean. And then everybody everybody who works as a psychic goes through a chapter where they do the psychic fairs. Um, I don't know if they do them anymore, but, you know, it's a, it's usually a, a nice We a do nice here. Store. <laughs> Still do there. Okay. We do them here well, in conventions, but yeah, we started the bookstores and then and yeah, even here I was working at the bookstore and she asked me to come to her event and convention. She has two a year. So, uh, but with the COVID nineteen and twenty twenty, we canceled both of them, right? So right. we still have so psychic no, fairs. No yeah, psychic whole fairs. body life. And, right, and so. Um, and then I did, you know, Whole Life Expo, you know. I started in San Francisco, 1990, Whole Life Expo, and uh, did a series of radio shows and and then went back and did another Whole Life Expo. But anyway, the Whole Life Expo was great. Um, you know, you rent a booth, you set up your, your little shop, and just 
did that little convention uh, thing for a couple of years. I probably did it for a little bit more than two years, and then uh, and then it was strictly um, private clients and telephone work and. And then in 1998, I went to work in a restaurant, and it was the first time I had ever, I'd worked Christmas parties and corporate parties, but I had never worked in public, you know, five to seven days a week. And that's what I was doing when I started there. And it was a great situation because there's new people every night, and... um, I would ask somebody to introduce me to a table or I would introduce myself to a table and people would get readings and there wasn't a lot of pressure for the people to pay a lot of money because they were having dinner and they were um, hanging out and it wasn't, I wasn't the only entertainment. There were dancers and musicians and artists and so I had a couple of friends that worked with me and that's what I did. Uh, and I, that situation started in December of uh, December 10th of 1998, and it ended on uh, February 28th, 2019. That's a long so, time to be a psychic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it really, it it is. And then the um, then in that period of time, I got a request from another location for um, me to open up a location for psychics, and I thought that I was going to be working Cafe Tutu Tango Universal City Walk, and that project, um, by the time I got all the psychics organized and got the whole thing set up, I had lost one of my psychics at the Orange location, and there was no way I could do Universal, and it was too much of a drive. So I simply stayed, I worked a little, I got the psychic set up there and uh, worked with the general manager, got the thing set up, but it just never worked out, and so I ended up staying at the Orange location, and then I went to work in another um, place, the BOA, which was inside of a hotel on Sunset Boulevard called the um, Grafton on Sunset, right at the intersection of uh, La Cienega and Sunset, and I worked there for five and a half years, and on Wednesday night, they um, had a little room, and that was the room that I sat in, and I did readings. And it was really, it was really quite nice. It was really a beautiful, little tiny boutique hotel, and it was a great owner, and um, it was, it was really a great situation. So, so I spent the period of '98 to 2019, basically working in public, you know, working events, working parties, uh, working restaurants, and I think it's I think it's such an important part for anybody who's who wants to be a psychic to learn how to work in public. I think it's such an important piece of training. I really recommend it. First of all, um, you're going to encounter a lot of people, and it's just uh, by the numbers, you're going to encounter. You're just going to encounter a really great cross section of people. Uh, you learn a lot about social graces, how to get along with people even if things are difficult, and always how to give a very positive reading. So those are the things that I think um, are sort of like the more refined process. And of course, the benefit is is that you know if you do a good reading for somebody, they remember you. They come back to the restaurant. They they book a private reading for you you know, with you, it, it's different. It creates a different world for you. It gives you a really large cross-section of people to work from. Well, there's all types of psychics out there, and we know a lot of them, and uh, you've seen some on TV, and then there's people I've in uh, a few groups, like James Van Prague and his little group, and he trains people, mm-hmm. and he came down here for one of the conventions, and they made Ghost Whisper. I think, uh, told, he's produced, at least been in charge of a lot of the shows or directing or producing and uh, then there was John Edwards. He's very famous. And then I think he got disgruntled for a while, but he came back around, I believe. He's back on again. And So uh, Yuri Geller was well-known for ESP, that type of work, and with the 
government and helping train people into remote viewing. And there's all types of topics that we could help people understand. And we were looking at a glossary, and we could help people with our little psychic network club. And I had this psychic network in Hawaii from 89 to 94 when I moved back, so five years roughly. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, yeah, I did a lot of readings then and had spiritual uh network too and then i had uh i was re i was actually doing radio shows too and talking about the the experience i had earlier they wanted to know about my near-death experience so how that worked and uh so you know i, I may not have written just a book but i was uh scared to write a book about it back in the day with my children and my grandmother told me I should, our great-grandmother. Uh, well, it's actually my husband's great-grandmother. But I finally got around to writing books, but not about my near-death experience. And that's, a, I guess, in a way, that could be a spiritual book, Soul Expanse. I don't know. Psychic Network, Soul Expanse, Near-Death Experience, Accepting Life, Not Always What You're Taught and Think. But, you know, what are we going to do with this universal life spiritual communication but at the same time i really don't want it to be a philosophy or religion but they always seem to want to go that way but metaphysics is metaphysics science is science but how do you see some key tag words because i put on the uh, tumblr you know psychic and ascension psychic and you use power psychic or best psychic but you know people a lot of them Unless you put the word psychic, they really don't know. And they're saying that counseling is so expensive, uh, you know, all over 300 or more an hour, that, you know, you can maybe get psychics to go for 150 an hour these days. But, you know, I don't know. I don't know what's going on, but I know that it's getting to be where more and more people would like to have support. So yeah. uh, whether you want to call it counseling or not. Let me see who this is. Hold on. Let me see who this. Hi, uh, did you just you want to talk or did you just call in to listen? There's this. Hello. You just listening? Huh? What's the phone number there? Okay, it's just somebody listening, I guess. I can hear the so, TV in the background. Ah, uh, so one of the um, so, ARE, which is Edgar Casey's mm -hmm. Institute in Virginia Beach, they they teach lucid dreaming and they found that people that had had a near-death experience were seven times more likely to do lucid dreaming than people that hadn't and that was their finding it's not my finding it's not my um, article nothing this is edgar casey's institute the are and they have a lot of classes they have a um, they're very ethical they're very honest they have a great teaching model and um, I really have enjoyed studying their material and taking their classes. So I think one of the one of the things that people, when I talk to people, they're always very surprised to find out that I spent a lot of time in classes and seminars and learning and being taught. They simply think that a psychic is born that way and you can't learn it. Either you're psychic or you're not. But there is really a lot of material that can be learned. It just depends on whether or not you're disciplined, you're motivated, and you're interested in it. So um, I think one of the points that you're making is is that people want the information, and I think they need to have a better idea of how to talk about it. So Harvard offers an online class in learning how to read, you know, tarot cards. So a lot of the things that you and I studied, educated, and trained through, which were not mainstream and were not generally accepted, certainly not by, you know, a well-recognized university like Harvard, um, a lot of those things, a lot of those barriers are gone today. A lot of those taboos are gone. There, I'm not saying there isn't still some taboos of people that are um, don't really understand what it means to be a psychic, but it's... It's a different world today, and there is a real need for people to become educated. My primary interest is in educating people and to teach them how to learn to do their own dream interpretation because I think that that's probably the most easily accessible um, method to learn about your own spiritual development. 
your dream in your 